Hi, and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Be sure to check out the blooper reel at the end of the video, which is then followed by the end screen where you will find more videos listed. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Skinwalker This awesome story is written by Max Minton. Be sure to pop over to his creepypasta fandom page and take a look at his other stories. My father told me a story once. I'll never forget it for a few reasons. I think it's the first story he ever told me as a child. It's also the story of how my grandfather died. But honestly, that isn't the reason. You hear stories on TV, or sometimes you overhear them in a public place. People talk about ghosts and aliens, and you think to yourself, that isn't real, they're making it up. Or they're mistaken, or they're crazy, or something like that. You just can't believe it, until something happens. Something that brings it all together, connects the dots in a way you didn't think of before. Maybe it happens to you. Maybe you hear the same story again and again, happening to different people. It doesn't take long for the world to become a lot bigger than you thought it was. That's not what my father called it, of course. He's never used the internet in his life. He wouldn't know what the consensus has taken to naming it. When he chose to call it something other than it, or that thing, he called it Skimwalker, after an old Navajo tale his grandfather told him. But I'll tell you the story, the way he told it to me. We were out hunting one night, he told me. Coyotes, we kill them for 50 bucks a skin. They lived on a dairy farm in Ohio. They'd kill calves sometimes. We'd do it every night because we needed the money. Sometimes while we were out, we'd come on a deer and kill it. Our landlord didn't mind and it could feed our family for a few nights and save us some money. Anyway, we were done making our rounds and heading home, walking because we didn't have a car or some four-wheeler back then. We cut through the woods. That's when we came up on it. Blood everywhere. Splattered on the trees, in the grass, in the creek, everywhere. At first, we figured it was a pack of coyotes. We'd seen it sometimes. They can't scavenge and start hunting deer or cattle. The worst was when they bred with feral dogs, but this wasn't like that. See, when a pack of dogs, or wolves, or coyotes attack something, they do it right. They'll pick off one that's weak, or sick, or old, or just small. They'll hunt it, draw it into a corner someplace it can't get out of, and then they'll run it right to the biggest one the alpha, and that deer will never see that alpha. It might hear it, but it won't see it. It'll just notice that its throat is gone, and then it'll drop dead. It's quick, it's clean. That wasn't what happened here. Something had run up on a den of deer. Coyotes won't attack a den, wolves neither because they get too much of a fight. There were three, I think, three bodies, just torn apart. You'd see a head here, a leg here, a torso there. Predators don't do that. They don't leave behind scraps. 
What had done this hadn't done it for food, it had done it for fun. But we didn't know that. We saw a bunch of carcasses and we think it's something we gotta take care of. I remember my dad telling me to go home. He thought it was a pack of feral dogs. But I wasn't leaving him and I damn sure wasn't walking through two miles of woods alone with nothing but a 22 and a pocket knife. He was only 13 at the time, so a 22 rifle was about the only gun he could reliably use. Dad had the shotgun, and I wasn't going anywhere without it. It took me a while to convince him, but finally we began tracking whatever did that. It wasn't hard either, we just followed the blood. Either that thing bled a deer before it got away, or it dragged one for a mile. I don't know. I know that I'd never seen my dad scared before that night. We started hearing noises. I've been in a lot of woods in my life. I've been all over the world, and ain't never heard noises like I heard that night. I heard things screaming. Heard deer, and fox, and rabbits, and raccoons, and birds, just scared. Keep in mind, this is maybe 12 or 1 o'clock. Except the wolves and some birds, nothing was supposed to even be awake. But they weren't just awake, they were moving. I saw flocks of birds that night fly straight into trees just trying to get out of there. We came up on a pack of coyotes, nearly shot a couple, thinking it was what we were looking for. But then we saw they were running towards us. They ran right past us, didn't even notice. Then some deer did the same. Then some rabbits, squirrels, foxes, even a couple wild hogs. These things were supposed to be eating each other and the only thing they cared about was getting out of there. We should have put it together that maybe whatever we were tracking it wasn't something we were supposed to see and it wasn't something we could kill. I don't know why we didn't just go home. I guess we were curious. I think that was my dad's nature to go towards trouble, to fight. And knowing what I knew about what my father did during the war, my nature was to stay close to him. We finally get into an open alley. It was normally a soy field, but it wasn't in season, so it was just flat dirt. We saw the tracks then. A lot of the animals fleeing the forest had paved over the land, but where the deer blood was, Nothing had taken a single step, like they were leaving it for us to find. The tracks were shallow. Whatever it was couldn't have weighed more than 100 pounds, but that didn't mean much. A bobcat weighing 40 pounds wet nearly tore out my damn throat once. All that means is that it's quick and hard to kill. So we follow the tracks and it doesn't take us long to find where it is. There's this old schoolhouse that sits on the top of a hill. Half of it had been ripped out by a tornado, but nobody lived there, not for a long time. We caught homeless people in there sometimes, or druggies looking for a safe place to shoot up. We figured maybe that was it, maybe it was some sick kid riding a high, but we didn't think that for long. We get within 50 yards and we hear this noise, a screeching kind of noise. It was sort of made up of two different sounds. One was high pitched screech, another was a low pitched growl. It was making both at the same time. We get within 20 yards 
and we hear this sound. I can remember thinking that it sounded like paper being torn apart while someone was swinging water in a bucket back and forth. Dad looks at me, kneels down and whispers, I gotta stay behind him because we're about to corner him. Any animal will fight when it's cornered, especially when it's a predator. But we can tell by the tracks that it's just one. He tells me it's probably a single feral dog, probably rabid. The plan is to sneak up on it while it's eating, shoot it, and then keep shooting it till it don't move anymore, then slit its throat. If it gets to dad, it's my job to shoot it or stab it to get it off him. So he walks up and I'm right behind him, just a tad to his side so I can see what it is. I wish to this day I hadn't. It was leaning over a carcass, tearing off its flesh and throws what it doesn't nibble at aside. There's blood all over the brick glistening in the moonlight. It's pale white, human looking, but not quite human. It had arms and legs like a human, but it sat like a monkey, hunched over. Its hands weren't normal. It had long fingers with claws at the end. So we see that and my dad hesitates. He wasn't about to fire on a person, so he clears his throat to try and get it to turn around. I swear to God, all the noise just ceased. I ain't ever heard true silence before that, and not after it. But for two seconds, nothing. Nothing made any noise which made it all the louder when it turned around, made this shrill cry, and jumped on Dad. He got a shot off. I think he missed. If he hit the thing, it didn't mind. But it was on him, tearing parts of him off. I start shooting it with the 22, point blank, but it barely bled the thing. I got off five rounds, and then I started hitting it with the gun butt, but it wasn't budging. It didn't even register that I was there. It clawed at my dad, taking off bits of his flesh. It started on his torso, ripping off the skin, his tit, then it moved up. It tore off his throat, it tore off his nose, his eyes. It scalped him. Then it started digging in and ripped off the bottom half of his jaw. The little bones in that tube in your neck, then his ribs. I don't exactly remember what happened, but somehow my dad's knife ends up in this thing's shoulder and my dad ends up on my back. I'm running. And by God, I'm running faster than I'd ever run before, or after. And it's following me. I end up back in the woods, opposite the ones we'd been in. I'm heading towards my landlord's house, cause it's half a mile away. I can hear this thing, screeching and moaning. I hear the tree branches crack and get thrown around. It sounds like someone's taking an axe to every single tree I pass. It's cracking so loud and often. But I just ain't looking back. I look up and there's my landlord with a bunch of his buddies drinking around a campfire. I scream and I cry and they come over. I'm telling them to call an ambulance and he looks at me and I'll never forget what he said. What is that on your back? He asked me. Just as he said it, he saw. One of those god awful flannel shirts my dad wore everywhere. It was 
what was left of my dad. Most of his head, his torso, but nothing after the waist. Suddenly, we hear it screeching. He grabs me. My dad gets thrown on the ground. I'm fighting him, crying because I think we can still save him somehow. But my dad had been gone before I ever picked him up. He has to pick me up and throw me inside before I come with him. He and his buddies were all inside and they're locking doors and getting guns. The landlord's asking me what happened, what happened. But I just don't know what to tell him. He pieced enough of it all together to understand that there was something dangerous there. All the lights in the house are on and someone calls the cops. They'll be there, but in 15 minutes. We look outside and see it walk in front of the fire they'd made. Don't know what it is. One of them says it looks like an ape. Suddenly something goes through the window. We shoot at it, but ain't a thing. It's my landlord's dog. Just the body though. Not his head or legs. We start pushing things in front of doors and windows when we hear something in the garage. I remember one of his friends saying that the doors were open. We hear metal and glass just get ripped apart. We put a couch and a TV in front of the door to the garage. It banged around some more, but then it got quiet. Not silent like it was before. We could hear it move around some, and the guys were talking, making sure the guns were ready. Someone hands me a pistol. No sooner did I cock the hammer back, did we hear something shatter upstairs. Then we heard it screech again, except now it was louder, and it didn't echo and fade out because it was inside. We all rushed to the one door leading upwards and we got to it just as that thing did. It opened it just a bit and four or five men just slammed into it. It got its hand through. Someone with the shotgun took care of that, put that barrel right up to its wrist and pulled the trigger, cut its hand off clean. That only pissed it off though. It started pushing on that door, clawing. We were on one side pushing as best we could and it was on the other doing the same. That wood just wasn't going to hold, so someone tells us to keep our heads down. Suddenly the top half of the door is just gone. My ears are ringing and there are splinters everywhere. Two or three of them just unloaded on the top of the door. I don't really know where it went after that. The police got there. I was still glued to the door, what was left of it. The sun was up before they got me off it. They put me in a hospital for a while. A lot of people talked to me, but I didn't talk back. Not for a long, long time. When I got back home, I got a job from the landlord, working on the farm. We didn't talk much, not about the thing, but I signed off for the army when I was 19, and he set me down to drink some scotch as a send-off. I asked him right away what the police told him. The story they went with was a wild animal, probably a wolf or maybe a bear that had migrated north. I asked him how they could say that when they had the hand. He looks at me, stunned. He tells me that hand never made it back to the station. The cop who had it in his car, wrecked, drove it into a tree, died on impact. The hand was never found probably taken away by an animal. The cops, 
when they would acknowledge the hand existed at all, said it was simply the paw of a bear that looked like a human hand. I never talked to the landlord again. He went missing when I was in basic. The cops never found him. They said he owed some people some money and just ran away. But I don't think it's that simple. I never went back to those woods. I wouldn't even if I had the whole goddamn US Army at my back. That was a lie. When my mother died, I don't think my father felt he had anything left and that he might as well settle old scores. He went to those woods. He never came back. The FBI was called. They did a show for everyone involved, but I knew they weren't really looking. I had to get one drunk and slip him a few fifties before he finally told me that they got a few calls about those woods every year, about someone up and vanishing, but that was all he wanted to tell me. Before he got up and left with the rest of his team, he wrote the rake onto a napkin. I, I didn't know what it meant until I searched for it on the internet. Honestly, I would have rather not known. And I hope you enjoy the blooper reel. That's not what m He's never used the internet in his life. He wouldn't know what the consensus has taken to calling it. You'd see a head here, a leg there, a toss. He was only 13 at the time, so a 2 2 rifle was about the only gun he could rely. We figured maybe that that what? The plan is to sneak up on it while it's eating, shoot it, and then keep shooting it till it don't move many. If it gets to dead, it's mu- It clawed at me dad. Then it started digging in and rip it. Hey family, please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold that notification bell and then select all. That way, you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing, you'll be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. A very big thank you to Max Minton for allowing me to narrate this awesome story. And make sure to check out their creepypasta fandom page for more brilliant stories. And why not? Hashtag cryptids roost in your comments. A quick thank you to all my cryptids roost community family too. We are now well on our journey to 1000 subscribers. If you would like to support us and throw me a dollar or three, I'd be very much appreciative. I do have PayPal, paypal.me slash cryptids roost. Alternatively, I have an account at buymeacoffee.com. You don't even need to register on either site to donate. I have a subreddit if you have a story you've written that you would like me to narrate for you. You can also follow us. All my socials are contained within the link tree link below. And don't forget to check out the end screen. 
see above. That will also list some more videos in my back catalogue. All the links are below. Take care everyone and I hope you all have a wonderful and peaceful night. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is. Mm-hmm.